Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CDC Gaming Channel, where we're live at IGA 2024. And to my left, I have Joe Asher from IGT Play Sports. Joe, how are, how's the show? Yeah, well, it's getting started uh, for me, but it's uh, it pretty well attended, I think, this year, and uh, seems to be a lot going on. You had quite the panel earlier. Can you give us some highlights on what that was about? Well, it was a sports betting panel, um, shockingly enough, but... Uh, the uh, a lot of discussion on a number of topics from you know the potential of expansion in California. What does that look like? How does it happen? And and in addition to you know broader topics around uh, iGaming, gaming, uh, integrity, responsible uh, responsible gaming, and all sorts of uh, aspects of it. Be really interesting. Yeah, and you know specifically we're here at IGA. So when it comes to IGT Play Sports, is there anything you guys are doing that's different when it comes to tribal gaming or things you have to focus on or be aware of? Sure. So it, we're, we're probably the number one or close to it uh, supplier to tribes across the country. In fact, we've got to be the number one. I think they could prove it. Number of tribes in the state of Washington, Wisconsin, North Carolina, uh, and elsewhere. And, and, you know, they're all a little bit different. Uh, but and in those states, you know, tribes have their right to operate sports betting, and they're doing so using the IGT uh, hardware, software, our trading services business, which is basically a, a uh, team of about 20 bookmakers who are based in Las Vegas and who, you know, set the odds, manage the risk, and so forth. Um, and so uh, the, it's it's become a very nice um, part of the business for us. Um you know, IGT historically has relationships with all these tribes, uh, and so it's a uh, it's a trusted partner. And then on the play sports side, of the business, you know, there's a, a team with a, a lot of experience, you know, decades and decades of experience um, in this area, uh, and so it's a good combination. You know, let's talk success stories. Obviously, you've rolled out in several states now. What are some of the things you are hearing that they love players about the app and, and what they enjoy? Well, I think you know, for speaking and focusing on, on, on tribal customers, it's um, sports betting has just been a great way to drive visitation to the property, to a great new um, product to offer to customers. Uh, and you know, not only do people come in and bet, but there's the social aspect of it. You know, our friends up in Green Bay, the United tribe, they've, built a terrific um, sports book with you know, food and beverage offerings and the peak bar top machines that are built into the uh, to the bar where you can play you know video poker or table games and then on sports and uh, it's become a, a, a reason for people to come to the property and and stay at the property um, and I think that's been the lesson for uh, a lot of tribes uh, you know it's just a great new way to get people come visit the property and while they're there uh, they may go and play something else i mean you know, sort of the classic example is you know the packers win in cover the guy cashes his uh his bet and then you know goes to the tables um and so i i think the uh, having the the product offering is something that's been uh, real positive for those tribes you know there's a lot of different products that are emerging to the market you got you know sports books like better that are focusing on micro betting what trends do you see in the future of sports betting that you like and think are going to impact sports betting as a whole? Well, uh, clearly the um, the availability of, of things for people to bet on, the content um, uh, drives so much engagement and, and the consumption of sports is at, a, at an all-time high. I mean, you look at, you know, the, we're, you know we're, we're talking a couple of days after the... Uh, uh, the final four games and, you know, the women's game, you know, got higher viewership uh, on the Sunday afternoon than the men's game. Wow. Probably for the first time ever in the, uh, the you know, whether it's a narrative around, you know, just the individual player, Caitlin Clark, or, or, or greater interest in um, women's basketball. I mean, it, it, if you had told me 10 years ago that, you know, the women's game would be getting in higher viewership than the men's game, probably wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have believed it um and and you know to some extent maybe it's a function of the transfer portal playing uh into it a little bit uh as well on the on the men's side um which is i think created some challenges but in any event the the um 
the 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 product the consumption of sports is an all-time high um operators are coming up with new ways for people to bet on things same game parlays have become a very big deal where you you know you wager a little with the chance to win a lot and it's related contingencies within uh within a game you know Mahomes to throw over one and a half touchdown passes uh Kelsey to catch a touchdown and uh the Chiefs to win by seven as a, you know, there's a price on that you know historically you couldn't parlay things that had related outcomes um but within the last couple of years people um had figured out how to do it in a way that's clearly attractive to customers and and uh, profitable for operators. and joe you're an industry expert there's been a lot of things going on in sports betting you know shohei otani some other folks some scandals and then you have DraftKings, FanDuel, and BetMGM come up with Roga. Any comment on that, and do you think it's good for the industry? Um, well, so we're still waiting to see with this, you know, the entire story with Otani and his interpreter. I think um, if there's one thing that's probably clear, it's that you know we don't have all the facts yet around that. But the the debt appears to have been with an illegal bookmaker. Um, as opposed to in the legal regulated market, um, I, 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 the you know, the issues with Jonte Porter, uh, you know, a, a sort of marginal player, uh, being involved potentially in in um, um, some questionable betting activity, I think is a cause for concern that um, comes to light because it happened in the legal regulated market where you have reporting uh, of those sorts of things. Um, but I think there will be some lessons to be learned from that, uh, for sure. Um, and, you know, with respect to, um, the, uh, Roga, Roga and the, the, the responsible online, um, gaming, um, association, um, I think, you know, there's, there's clearly going to be a focus on responsible gaming because it's inevitable that there's going to be, you know, stories about, um, People get into trouble gambling, right? Problem gambling, nothing new. My dad was a compulsive gambler when I was a kid growing up in Delaware. So this is not a new topic. What is new is that it's in the legal um, and regulated world. Um, you know, the advertising um, it probably um, leads to an increase uh, in problem gambling just because of the awareness uh, and the availability of legal options. Uh, so it's critically important, I think, that um, operators take it seriously and and focus on it and and I think ultimately the the um, the question is going to be it's great to have the association mm. and I'm all for it and kudos to to those who who founded it but the real you know the the real question is say okay what does the association do how does it home how does it make a real difference so it's great to to form it totally on board with that you know but I think people will need to focus yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Lastly, Joe, to change it up a little bit, you're a key industry figure. What outside of your sector are you most excited about that's happening in our industry? Um, look, I, th I think from a broad policy perspective, I think you see gaming widely accepted across the United States uh, in uh, as as an industry where uh, you know, anybody can come into it, uh, earn a living, support their family, uh, have a good life, and and advance within the industry. And there's countless stories uh, um, around that. And, and, and so the industry, I think, is one of great opportunity. Uh, and and I think the, the acceptance of gaming uh, as an industry and all the benefits that it provides to people is something... Uh, that that is wasn't always there uh but i think it's you know it's become increasingly um increasingly evident that it's an industry like any other industry in terms of the uh uh the respect that it deserves and and um the economic input that it generates the economic output that it generates across the country ladies and gentlemen igt play sports joe asher joe thanks for taking the time today thank you